But the other thing I want to talk about is the idea of tutoring and what the deal is with that. So here's the thing, right? Is that first of all, I have a, a company that is set up that actually provides tutoring services. Okay. So like we, we charge students to help them get into medical school and we do like tutoring for the papers and we have classes and we've got online courses and, and stuff like that. And, and I know a lot of you have actually messaged me about that already. It's not actually necessary, right? So the reason that we have those is because there are people who want it, there are parents who want it, and there are people who just want it as like a safety thing. So really you wanna be asking yourself a couple questions there. Does it make a difference in terms of the outcome? Does it make a difference in terms of the process? And ultimately is that difference worth money? Is, is really the only thing there. So a lot of students who get the tutoring probably don't need it in terms of does it affect the outcome? Would they have gotten into medical school without it? I would say like 40 to 50% of the time, the answer would actually be yes. So in terms of the outcome difference, there are students that are more on the fence and they really do need that help to get in. But, you know, is it worth signing over like an $8,000 contract, which there are definitely people that will try to sign you off and stuff like that. Is it worth that? No freaking way. You know, unless your dad is like some oil tycoon and it's just money to blow. I, like, and even then, it's probably just gonna be a waste of time. So you, the, the main thing is actually really about the process and how it's gonna make you feel. The main advantage of getting tutoring or any type of help at university, I'm gonna make a different spiel about this when it comes to high school, which is really, really different. At a university level, when you're in pre-med trying to get into medical school, what you should be thinking about is, does it make it less stressful? Does it increase my sense of safety? Does it increase my chances and probability? And is that uh, experience, in improvement in the overall experience, is that gonna be worth however much I'm, I'm gonna be paying for it? And so for that, when you think of it from that point of view, a lot of students decide that yes, it is actually worth it, regardless of whether it changed the outcome, the fact that it increased my chances, or even if it didn't increase my chances, the fact that it made the process more enjoyable, or the experience just felt more secure and safe, that alone, that's basically what people will end up getting tutoring for. So people buy onto it because they're looking for an outcome, but people stay on it because it provides them a process-related benefit. But you shouldn't be thinking that it's required to get into medical school. And that's really important because there's a lot of fear-mongering and praying that's done on students because a lot of you guys don't... Um, know much about the pre-medical, you know, it's like a really specific thing, you know? Like I've been doing this for a really long time, which is the only reason I have a deep level of knowledge about it. But most of the, most of, number one, most of the people that are giving you advice, career advisors from schools and school counselors, like, you know, other places that will hold seminars and stuff, the people that are actually giving that information have only been doing that for like two or three years. They actually don't know what's what. And their agenda is probably more to just convince you to buy whatever they're selling which obviously for you is not in your best interest. So in order to just be thinking about it independently, I would really just break it down into thinking not about whether it's gonna make a difference to the outcome because you're number one, not gonna know that. And number two, there's a decent chance that it wouldn't make a difference to the outcome. So you shouldn't feel the need or the pressure to get tutoring if you didn't feel like you needed it anyway. But what you should do in high school is make sure that you're not getting tutoring, okay? so. Think about this. If you get tutoring when you're in high school and you do well, was it because of the tutoring or because you can do well? Most of the time when I'm working with students that are getting tutoring in high school and when we take the tutoring away, they really start suffering. So what happens when they enter into first year university or when they enter into medical school even where tutoring is not even available? They really struggle. And actually, so the students that get lots of tutoring in high school, they struggle the most later on. There's actually entire research papers that's done on this. It's like an observed phenomenon. You can look it up. It's called the fade out effect. So when you're in high school, you should not be getting tutoring. You should do the best that you can possibly get. And if you're at risk of not even getting the rank score, okay, fine, maybe get some tutoring just to that minimum level, but you, you should be milking out as much as possible, the best possible result independently. And then based on that, you'll have good data about yourself and your processes to know, do I feel confident enough to be able to achieve 
you know, a four times harder result by myself. If you feel that you're confident to do that, you should go ahead and do that. And then within that first week, you evaluate, am I hitting my metrics and my targets? And if you're not, then you come and ask for help. And then we see what we can do. It's not something that I think you should be just going into completely blindly. There is one caveat to this though. I do think it's worthwhile for most students to actually spend time before the semester begins to study the semester material, just studying it in advance. Because of the fact that you don't actually know what university is going to be like until you're in it, most students are caught off guard. Even if they overestimate it, they still end up underestimating it in some way. And so as a result, doing a little bit of early preparation means that you increase your margin and room for error. So even if you're screwing things up for the first couple of weeks, you're not really gonna be falling behind because you were already ahead to begin with. And this is why most of the people that are on our academy memberships, they start around this time of the year, year 13, they kind of trickle along and get some of the materials throughout the year. And what I actually encourage is finish your year 13 study ASAP so that you finish that year, challenge yourself to do it, see how difficult that feels for you. And that's gonna give you information about do you need to improve your study systems and processes, in which case now you have three, four months of high school time to experiment without risking your medical entry. And you can use pre-med first year material as practice for that. So you're getting a double effect where you're primarily focused on trying to get better at studying and managing your time and stress, studying as little as possible, getting the best possible result. And because you're studying pre-med material as practice, you're getting the double benefit that you're now actually a little bit ahead for the year when you enter into it. So if I were to go step by step, I will be saying right now, if you're in year 13, in the next two to three weeks, finish studying your whole year. Finish studying everything for the entire year's externals or exams. If you're doing scholarships, give yourself another two weeks. Finish studying it and challenge yourself. See if you can and be really observant about the studying techniques that you use. And you're ha I'm very happy to be messaged about this as well. And then after that, turn your attention to improving your studying technique through the observations that you've made, through revision, good quality revision, and doing some pre-study for the year. And if you do it that way, you shouldn't really need too much more support through the year. And that's gonna make the biggest difference because the thing that makes a student successful at entering into medical school versus not is most fundamentally, can they study and manage their time effectively? If you can study and manage your time effectively, it almost doesn't matter what your high school, whatever was. There are a lot of students out there who are entering into first year pre-med who have already done other degrees or even other careers and they're entering into it, they're like 27, 28, 30, whatever it is. And they will just completely demolish the curriculum because they have a really high ability to just study and manage their time effectively. They're studying like half what everyone else is doing and they're getting better results. And the thing is that you don't actually have to go through this entire career in order to develop that. You could start developing that now. And in fact, that is what we get with a lot of our students is that when you try to set that as a goal, you can actually achieve it. If you just go through high school at high school standard, at high school pace, you finish high school, and then you start doing a little bit of prep beforehand, that's also okay. If you don't prep at all, and you're into, into university, now you're depending on luck. And I don't think that's a really sustainable or safe option. So from the students that I've observed, which is thousands, the students that consistently do well, are the ones who have in high school challenged themselves and spent time preparing with a huge focus on increasing their study efficiency. Consistently, those students have a much easier time in pre-med. That is the safest option by far. The second most safest option is students who challenge themselves but don't prepare in advance, but still through challenging themselves, look at their studying effect effectiveness and try to increase that. And then, there are students that just do normal high school pace and do a little bit of preparation. The difference between students who just prepare in advance and students who have spent time in high school learning how to study more effectively is massive. There is a very big difference between those two types of people. It's to the point where doing a little bit of preparation before the semester without having done that in high school, in some ways, almost doesn't really make a big difference because at some point you're always gonna fall behind 
because your studying effectiveness wasn't there to keep pushing you forward. So whatever head start you had just comes grinding to a halt. And when it does grind to a halt, you're left unable to keep pushing that momentum forward. That's what I, that's what I see every single year. Anyway, let's have a look at the uh, comments. Any questions on anything that I've said? Leave them down here. I'm covering a lot of kind of big meaty topics um, pretty quickly. So...